recording. Great. Yes. Okay. Um, so I think what we're going to have to do is probably just go through and, and, and um, you know, uh, I guess the problem is we have to include log in everything. God damn it. Um, so yeah, we have to include log everywhere. We have uh, that was part of like the fun is you didn't have to include log. Uh, um, Maybe sorry, we can uh, find a workaround for a specifically log. Yeah, you know, I think so, actually, now that we're thinking about it. Um, because what do we do? I mean, a log is like a basically... Yeah. Oh my God. What? Okay. We were making this, or I was making this way harder than it fucking needed to be. I'm sorry. Um, big surprise. That's always how it goes. Um, so yeah, it should just be command, uh, util CLI command, um, okay. Yeah, it should just be basically where was it? Um, yeah, okay, so sub parser, right, so we add a sub parser which Okay. Add subs, which one is add subs? Okay. So okay, yeah, if this thing is another command class. We come in here and we say, uh oh, why is there no coverage on this? Oh. Um, if sub parses is none, always oh, sub commands. Oh, yeah, this thing. Um, so, yeah, we come in here. We basically we call add subs. Add subs ends up in here again. And then we just add argument. So basically at the first, basically this is all we needed to do. This is all we needed to do right here was just come in here and always add argument lock. Right. I mean, I'm thinking okay. this is, yes, I that think will work. Happen, right. Okay. This is, we're making this harder than it needed to be. Uh, <laughs> Uh, after all, like log is hidden from everything, so it really should just be all contained in this file. Um, sweet. Well, this is great news. Um, let me just make a little comment and push this up. So uh, let's see, self. Yeah. So in order to add log to every command, uh, we just okay. We just add it here first thing i mean that'll do right so well i'm glad we figured that out um i'm sorry i'm i'm stubborn on things sometimes 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 uh we need to no, the you need, thing is let, that let, let me know if i'm being ridiculously stubborn for no reason on some some things because no i wanted to work it like that too yeah right it was like it it felt like that would be great, right? <laughs> it would just uh, th keep the things the same as they were. Uh-huh, and it would all look so clean. Uh -huh. Oh, well. Uh, okay, so to do log, um, and then let me just push this up here. And let me make a note that, can you take this from here then, basically go through and, and do the rest of them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. So the okay, so. thing is that only log will be added, and I'll have to add... Uh, Things like if there is sources, arc sources being yeah. inherited, then I'll have to just add it again somewhere else where it's still uh -huh. being inherited. Yeah, we'll just have to copy paste it. And I mean, one thing that we could do is we could just like define a bunch of fields, right? Um, because we have the field um, thing. And so basically, like, you know, equals field. Um, uh, Let me just say what I'm talking about here. Um, right, so if we're doing like equals field config loader, we could just say, you know, like we could have something in util CLI that's like a bunch of just um, um, 
fields that are predefined so you can be like default blank right or like blank field um so for example if we had um mm, let's see what's a good example of this um yeah i guess sources would be the best example um yeah sources is the best example because so many things use it so all right so let me just do you see what i'm saying here or i guess i'll just make it abundantly clear just in case um i i don't and i'm not understanding what you mean okay. right now Okay, great. So okay. I'll just, I mean, great as in I'll finish my example. I wasn't wasting my time. Um, so let's see. So, or I guess we should probably call it field sources. So we can do something like this, right? Where if we want to reuse, we can just do that and then import them from. So this would live in, would live in in dfml.util okay so the, the arguments that are most used we can just make them a default argument type something yeah exactly right so and we probably would want to put it somewhere like here right um, because now this is config stuff rather than cli stuff so in that case right yeah we can just say field sources and you know that might reduce the amount of repetitiveness that we're doing i mean we probably should do that where applicable um because um uh, if we ever have to change something then we don't have to change it in every single file right um so anytime if you're running across things and you're noticing that they're the same then probably just stick them in into into here and uh and then we'll be we'll, we won't have to change them later if we have to change them for some reason oh okay okay um, okay, so let me just uh, add that. Um, uh, split to do split out fields. Um, God damn it. Uh, I added this. Actually, this is something I need to, to do is oh wow that screen is really big um okay uh, i'm really used to having oh it's it's zoomed in um i'm really used to the 4k on this monitor it's really throwing me off um da, 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 where did that go okay this is something that we need to add and this might be helpful for you guys where the fuck is the event oh, there it is um there All right so this right here, um, I'll make it a little bigger. God, I love Linux machine. No, I just locked my screen. Just so I was saying how much I love Linux. Um, because everything just works. Um, so this basically, uh, do you guys know what commit hooks are in Git? Or like hooks in Git? Uh, no. Okay, so a hook is... You just check out the Git directory sometime in, uh, in your ample free time, right? Um, so the Git hooks, if you look in any Git repository in .git slash hooks, um, you'll see a bunch of these things. Um, and what these are are just little scripts that will run, as they say, before whatever action they're talking about, right? So if you say, uh, actually, I haven't even... What is this? Okay, well, I'm, I have limited experience with these, but whatever this one is looks cool. Um, uh, let's see. So, oh, is things this the like thing that when you commit or push, it runs the check before that. Yes, exactly. Right. So, if you say like cat dot git or vim dot git hooks pre commit. So what we have is basically just exec execute black and and check right so basically because we're doing exec it's going to fail if uh if if you if like if if so because we use exec it's going to replace this bash script with black um whereas if we didn't use exec and we called black um the return code of black wouldn't be checked 
um, and the script wouldn't fail necessarily. So it wouldn't stop Git from from uh, uh, not committing unless we do set E, um, which means like turn on every time if if a sub process that you call from black or from bash um, exits with a non-zero return code. So because zero is success as far as um, Unix uh, POSIX stuff is concerned, like processes returning. Um, so if it exits non-zero, then the whole script is going to exit. Um, and this is another trick is X is going to echo everything that you do. So if you ever want to know what a bash script is doing that you're writing, put set x at the top and if you ever want to catch it as soon like writing bash scripts this is very helpful because you do set e set x and now anytime you're going to see every single command being output to the screen so it's going to print it out with a plus in front of it and it's going to say you know whatever um so that's very helpful um for debugging and then also setting error is helpful because you'll know like because some commands don't output anything if they fail right like if you do grep for something and it doesn't find something and you told it to pipe it to a file well like you're just going to have an empty file right whereas if you did set e it'll exit because um it'll be like i didn't find anything and said like the next command that was going to do something with that file full of stuff is not going to run and because it the script will have exited once bash or once grep didn't find anything to pipe to that file um so set e set x is helpful um but otherwise if you just do exec then it's just obviously going to replace it and therefore the return code of black will be the return code of the commit pre pre commit hook and therefore uh if there's any errors it's not going to let you commit and you can reformat so that's a good one i need to add it to the contributing um but you can do all sorts of stuff um i have no idea what you can do i just know pre commit <laughs> um there's probably a lot of other cool things that you can be doing here and while we're at it we might as well just check out this one um watchman Well, this looks cool. Um, it must be something new, and it's written in Perl. Weird. Um, um, okay. Uh, so, yeah, so you'll get that stuff. Um, well, now let me push. Um, so, Sakshan, you've got that. And then what else are you working on these days, Sakshan? Uh, I, am, I haven't I haven't been working on the MNIST stuff uh, because of my deadlines, but I'll get yeah, to okay. it soon. Cool. All right. That'll be great. Um, because obviously, yeah, that, that, I mean, that wraps up that little thing very nicely. And now we can do the normalization. Um, I think the one thing was, let's see. So when we're creating that, um, we're basically going to be able to create the data flow with the create command. Um, I'm not taking any notes. Damn it. Um, Okay, watch out. Sorry, I'll be right back, I guess. Oh, Firefox now securely routes your DNS requests whenever possible to partner service to protect you while you grass. Right for DNS sec. Um, Okay, so let's see. Um, oh, I'm not presenting. Let's see, let's see. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Cool, sorry. I'm a mess with my video conferencing abilities today. Um, let's see, come on, allow, allow, allow. Hello, hello, fuck. All right, okay. Um, hello, 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 hello. Where's my? All right. Oh no, it's super bad. All right. Well, my other computer. Is frozen. So let's see. This is today is not a good day for my video conferencing. I'm sorry. Um, let's see. I guess we don't really have that much to talk about. So 
basically we were, we figured out how to get unblocked on the config stuff. Um, we, um, you're going to do the MNIST stuff. We'll normalize it. I think what I was going to say is that I wonder if I can show my screen on here. Probably not. Um, no, of course not. Why would I think that would work? And now this is frozen. All right, I swear my internet works sometimes. Um, I just tried to share my screen on my other computer and I froze that one. Okay, so screen sharing in Google Meet is not a good plan today. Um, but basically, okay, so you're, un you're unblocked on config stuff. MNIST will uh, will do the data flow pre-processing source. source um, and... Um, the yeah so yeah that's that's what i'm thinking is is we should do basically what what we should do here is we should oh um, oh great hey sudhanshu how's it going Um, so what we should do here is uh, we should use that create command um, that the modif the one the modifications that Agen just made to the create command to add the seed um, we should have we should use that multiply command or multiply operation that you already added um, and we should uh, pass as a seed input the the multiplier. And then have the uh, let's see, well, do we need this stuff to modify the input flow? I think we do, because or else we'd have to hand modify the input flow, wouldn't we? I think we need to modify the create command first before we do the rest of this tutorial, um, the rest of the modifications to this tutorial. I think we need to change the create command. Do we have an open issue for that? Um, I think we need to change the create command. Um, so that you can modify the input flow on the fly, like while you're creating, just like how you can add seed inputs. Um, and I think we might have some notes in this, either in the issues or on, I think I think there is an issue for this, um, or it's in the meeting minutes. And Sukhanshu, I, I'm having lots of issues sharing my screen today, so it's not happening. I'm sorry. Um, so I think, that needs to happen first because we'll want to show the create command. We'll want to, we'll, we'll basically want to do the create command, say that we want to get the input for the multiply operation from that feature. And then we'll want to have, we'll want to use that associate definition. So we'll want to have the create command be associate definition and multiply, and then have the, um, have the uh, um, uh, have the seed be the multiplier and the modification to the input flow on the command line basically just saying that okay for the multiplicand uh, the first argument of the multiply operation um, grab that as that feature right does that sound like a plan yeah yeah, and I think we have some, I think we have either an issue for it with, I think we talked about using the parse inputs action because that splits on an equal sign. And then we'll maybe need to write like a converse tra or traverse set operation, which would be the inverse of the traverse git, which is already in data. Um, and that basically you can just butcher up uh, traverse config git and you'll see how that works. Um, but that's probably the first step um, here. And then because that way we can show the creation all on one line, which means that when we, I think we have this in the unit tests, right? And so in the unit tests or the, the test file in the examples directory for under MNIST or examples MNIST and then the test file, the reason why it's important to get all of this stuff into command line things rather than file modifications is because it's much easier to automate the tests, right? 
Um, so then we can just throw in that create command in, into the test, um, and we'll we'll uh, we'll make sure that way it will always work, and we don't have to do some kind of funky file editing, right, um, within the test. Uh, does that all sound good? Oh uh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, let's see if I can open this without something exploding. Yeah, so let's see. Um, um, so, Sutanshu, how's it going with you? Sweet. Um, so, I, yeah, you were doing good stuff on these, uh, adding stuff to no way sync. Have you reached this one yet? Or?
This is so much important. So, so, so we'll be doing Basically, if they just do their type, type hinting stuff onto the function and specify the features when they load, they will get converted into an application. Um, so uh, we can do that before or after, obviously. We can load that thing. Um, well, actually, I guess we have to do it after. Um, because, well, we can do it at any point, but we can't use it as a function. Thank you. 
Shit, well, I guess you gotta do both of those things. <laughs> you gotta do both of the things. Related things but, okay, well, that, uh, that settles that then. Um, yeah, okay. Um, I see, now I see what you're saying. See, that was, that was good thinking there. <laughs> I completely missed that one. Yeah, well, okay, so that secrets uh, plug in type is gonna be real helpful then. Um, let's see, yeah, I guess it's the same use case too. It's just a config and an operation. So, um, yeah, I mean, I don't imagine that's going to take you too long, though, because it's basically just, you know, it's adding a new plugin type, so you just need to do, you know, make dirt, you have to put all secrets, and then touch it in, add base, you know, base entry point, um, you know, add base entry point on the class, the, the class and the config context, and then make the context have abstract method. Thank you. 
password and use that password to encrypt. Yeah, you're good. Well, you're basically going to want to modify the training command so that the source that you're giving it is the data plus source, and then the config of the data plus source is the source that was there. Right. So, uh, let me sort of post this real quick. Is that? I feel like that. Sorry, that sentence probably sounded like nonsense. Um, uh, use cases. MNIST issue with what I think the new train command is going to look like. Um, and that may or may not be correct, but maybe it will help me move along. Okay. Oh, that 
is the confusion. Yes. Okay. Um, can you just make that new issue then, and I'll comment on that issue with what I assume the train. I mean, do you need me to comment with what I think the train command is going to be, or, or do you? Um, Okay. All right. That sounds great. Cool. All right. Thanks, guys. Um, and I hope you have a great weekend, and I hope that all the exams go well. Um, I'll talk to you next week.
Two different computers, it failed in several different ways on each of them. 